Lunchtime was a little weird, and my afternoon classes were strange too. There was a lot of whispering, and I felt kids looking at me almost every second. It must have been sort of like the way a movie star feels in a grocery store. But I just tried to mind my own business and have a regular day. I tried to be normal. The rest of the day had two best parts. The first was when I went to see Mrs. Byrne right before I got on the late bus. I had been playing soccer in the gym, so I was hot and sweaty and a little out of breath. I was cutting it close because I hoped the library would be empty. And it was. Mrs. Byrne was alone, sitting at her screen at the front desk. I think she saw me coming, but she didn't look up until I was right in front of her. She smiled and said, big day? I smiled back, huge. Did you hear anything? Oh yes, more headline news in the teacher's room. Students saves her own skin, then wins follow-up debate. Very dramatic. I'm proud of you. I blushed. It wasn't so special. Mrs. Byrne shook her head. That's where you're wrong. It was. Everything you've done has been quite special and remarkable and wonderful. I started to talk, but she said, and don't say that you couldn't have done it without my help. There's an old saying, nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. And this time was your time, Nora. Now hurry up, run and catch your bus. I said, well, thanks all the same because you did help me, tons. And I started to go. Then I turned back and said, Mrs. Byrne, what college has the best courses in library science? She said, there's a number of fine programs. Why do you ask? You know, I said, in case I want to reach my full potential. Mrs. Byrne laughed and shooed me out of the room. But really, I wasn't kidding. The other best thing after this bus ride, Ben got off at the corner too, but his house was in the other direction. So it was just me and Stephen walking along the road. He didn't say anything until we got to my driveway. He kicked at the gravel with the toe of his sneaker. What you said in the library about kids thinking they were dumb after the test last year? That was me, wasn't it? I nodded. Yeah, it was you. He looked at my face and then at the ground. So all this was kind of about me? Yeah, kind of. But it was about me, too. Well, yeah, he said. You mean about you being smart and everything, right? Yeah, I said, all that. He smiled and said, maybe it wouldn't have been kind of fun to be suspended a couple of weeks. Do you think? I don't think so, I said. Too boring. A lot of stuff happens at school. Yeah, Stephen said, a lot. I couldn't think of anything else to say. Neither could Stephen. He said, so I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Yeah, I said, see you tomorrow. And then I went up my driveway and he walked toward his house. That three minutes with Stephen wasn't so much if you only look at the events, like a scientist would. Because really, what happened? Hardly anything. Stephen hadn't tried to do something like carry my book bag. He hadn't looked into my eyes and said, Nora, you're my best friend in the whole world. And we wouldn't have a deep discussion about school or tests or grades. We just spent a little time together at the end of the day. Stephen talked to me like a friend, like I was a normal person, just me, Nora. And that moment, nothing could have made me happier. And that's a fact.